Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're doing part three of Node School. Today's focus is on mixing shaders and mixing textures. So try and follow along where you can and I'll be trying to put a few challenges in there for you as well. Do make sure you've looked at the previous episodes and things like my beginner courses and beginner exercises. You can find all these playlists in the playlist section on my channel and there'll be links in the description. Okay, so let's begin. Your first challenge is to try and make this shiny red ball just here. Now there's nothing too complicated about this and it should be following along with things we've already done. Your hint is the Musgrave texture, so see how you get on with that. Okay, so hopefully you didn't find it too difficult, and I'll just go through what I did. Now first of all, I actually make a subdivided sphere, so Shift A to add mesh UV sphere, and that's added in the middle here. GZ1 to make sure it's above the surface, and it's right on top of my other one, so G and X, and I'll move it across to the side. The other thing I do is press Control 3, and if I go across to my modifiers now, you can see that's added a subdivision surface modifier with three iterations. So I can just apply that. You don't actually have to apply it, but I've applied it just for simplicity's sake. So if we go into edit mode, you can see it's a nicely rounded sphere with lots of faces. Okay, so let's go to the shading workspace up the top here. Now, if I click on the previous version, you'll see my node set up here. And you can see how basic it is. It's a basic red color. It's non-metallic, so fully dielectric. So it's got that plasticky look and it's very shiny. So it's got no roughness as you can see there. The thing that makes it look interesting is this Musgrave texture plugged into a bump node and into the normal map, and that gives it that swirly, bumpy texture. So if I move into these a bit, you can see the settings I've got for my Musgrave texture. You can find that by going Shift A, Texture, and Musgrave. And you can see how I've changed things a bit here. And it's just a case of having some fun, pulling these around and seeing what you come up with. If you came up with something close to this, then well done. The strength is fairly low. You can change the strength here with your bump map. And I have it on about 0.3. And in order to get the bump map, we press Shift A and we go to Vector Bump. We have to use a bump map because this is black and white information. Normal maps have a slight variation of color information. Okay, so that's how I made that one. And hopefully that was just a reminder of a few things. So I'm going to go on to making similar things to these two. So if I click on this one, you can see that I've actually mixed two textures together. And that's what I want to talk about today. So let's click on our new ball and give it a new texture. Now what I want to do is something that's really useful and that's enable the add-on Node Wrangler. This will be really handy as we go through. So go up to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons in the middle there, type in Node in the search bar and you'll see the Node Wrangler there. Make sure that's ticked and you should be able to close this down. If you want to make absolutely sure it's saved, I've got auto save preferences, but there's save preferences there. When you close that down, the Node Wrangler will now be enabled and you'll be able to do lots of useful, cool things. So let's talk about how I made this one. So if I press Shift A to add and add a noise texture and Shift A to add and add a Voronoi texture. Now with the Node Wrangler installed, I can now press Control and Shift left click on one of these items and it will create what's called a viewer node. This is actually an emission node, so it'll enable you to see exactly what this noise texture is like in isolation. The same with the Veronoi, so Control, Shift, left click, and it goes into this new viewer node. And this is going from the distance, so this is the black and white one, and it was the factor, so the black and white one of the noise texture. And remember, that's the difference between these gray outputs and the yellow ones. The yellow ones are actual color information. If I press Control, Shift, left click again on this, it moves across to the color. And I can hold down Control, Shift and keep pressing left click to cycle through them. I'm going to keep on the distance when I mix these together and the factor for the noise texture and just use a black and white material to create this interesting sort of brushed metal look. So if ever you want to go back to your main shader, Control, Shift, left click on that shader and it will go back using this and remove the viewer node. Okay, so how do we mix these two together? Well, I'm going to go the manual way for the moment, but there is a shortcut with the Node Wrangler. But for now, let's do Shift A Add, and I'm actually going to use the search function here. So I'll click on the search and type in Mix, and you can see that there's two different types of mix node here. There's one for mix shader, and there's one mix RGB. A helpful way to think of this is mix color, because RGB is red, green, and blue. Now the mix shader will enable you to mix shaders together and the mix color or the mix RGB will enable you to mix colors and textures together. So if I move away from this for a moment, 
Shaders have a green top to them like this and you can see the outputs are in green and textures they have the black and white information and the color information as well. So you can see that this link up here is color to color and that's what the noise texture looks like when it's in color. So we know that we need some sort of color mix rather than a shader mix. So I'll just unhook that and I'll press Shift A to add and go to color to find the mix RGB there. If you want the mix shader, it's under shader, roughly in the middle there. So color, mix RGB. Now let's hook these up together. I'm using the black and white information. It's still color in an essence, so it can go into the yellow. And from the Veronoi, I'm getting the distance, which is the same as the factor, black and white information, and plugging it into the other color. And we're mixing them both together. So let's hook that up to our principled BSDF and see what results we get. So I'll press full stop on my numpad to zoom in a bit and there we can see the results. Now if I use the slider, we can see the difference of the two. Now what you have to think about with this slider is that one is full and that's using the bottom input. So this factor is always thinking about how much of this bottom one do you want. So if I go to 0.5, that's half and half. The other useful thing to think about with this is that one can also mean fully white and zero can mean fully black. So you can put an input into here and change the factor with some sort of material that's black and white or color information that's then converted to black and white. And the white bits will go to this texture and the black bits will go to this texture. It does take a bit of time to get used to what this is doing, but with a bit of practice, you'll get there. So let's go to 0.5 and now we're mixing these two together. Let's see what it looks like without the principled BSDF. So control shift left click. And you can see the principal BSDF is adding some sort of roughness and other such things. So control shift left click to go back to the principal BSDF. And I think I hook this into the roughness to make the black bits shiny because they will be no roughness and the white bits will be fully rough. So let's have a look around our object and you should be able to see a lot of reflectivity in the black spots. And now I can move around this scale depending on what I want my sphere to look like and how much I want to mix between the two. Now if I put the metal up, we can see we've got something similar to this sphere here. The only thing I need to do is right click and shade smooth so it's got that smooth look to it. And it's a bit like a bashed sort of metal, slightly anyway. So your challenge now is to get another few spheres and mix two different textures together and have a play with the middle slider. We'll go into this section, which is blend modes, in later episodes, but you can try that if you like. The best thing to do with these things is just to experiment. Okay, so that's mixing color and textures. What about mixing shaders? Well, you can see with this unusual looking ball over here, I've got two shaders, the principal BSDF, and I'm mixing them together like this. So have a go and see if you can set that up yourself. Okay, so hopefully you had a go at that. Let's just recreate this texture really quickly. So Shift D to duplicate, Shift Z to keep it on the surface and create a completely new texture. So I'll cross this one out and add a new one completely. So one of my textures was red and really rough, so like a plastic. And I'll duplicate this texture. So I'll grab it and press Shift D to duplicate. Just like in the modeling window, move this one down, move this one across. And I can press Shift A shader mix shader but i'm going to do it in a different way i'm going to use the node wrangler and press Control shift right click and drag between the two and it creates a mix shader for me so they're both the same at the moment so we're not seeing any difference in the mix but if i change this one to a blue and fully metallic we've got something similar to this i think i went for a completely rough metallic okay so i've got something similar it doesn't look exactly the same. It's not really important in this case. I think I probably changed which one was metallic and which one wasn't. Again, it doesn't matter too much. But remember, we've got this slider here to change between the two. So there's my rough blue, which is metallic, and there's my shiny red. And when we cross between the two, we get a sort of purpley color and we get a sort of weird mixed metal, which doesn't actually exist. Now, what I want to do is actually use the factor input. Remember, we can use black and white textures to power this factor. So if I go all the way up to here, it would be the same as if I'd plugged a white texture into this. If I go down to here, 
it would be the same as if I plugged a fully black texture in. So if I press Shift A now, texture, and let's add a wave texture, I can go from the factor, which is the black and white information, but let's actually see what that looks like first. Have a think what we need to press to be able to view this. So Control, Shift, Left Click. And that's the color information. If I would Control, Shift, Left Click again, that's the factor information. So actually with a wave texture, it doesn't make much difference between the factor and the color. Now with the Node Wrangler installed, it's quite easy to hook up nodes. You Alt, right click to drag, and you can drag it into your mix shader, and it will go into the free slot. But I've still got my viewer node set up, so I need to press Control, Shift, Left Click on the mix shader, and it'll go to the mix shader. And you can see it's mixing between the red and the blue. And therefore we can change these parameters here, and change the way it's mixed together. So have some fun using different textures and mix them together. So there we go, that's the basics of the mix nodes. We've got mix shaders and we've got mix colors or mix RGB. And we can control the amount of mix with an actual texture to create some really interesting and fascinating looking materials. Very quickly, if I go back to this one, you can also use a texture into this mix node as well into the factor. So it doesn't have to be a mix shader, it can also be a mix RGB. Okay, so have a play with those, try and get a few different mix shaders and a few different mix colors on those shaders, and maybe you could mix some colors into mix shaders. Let me know in the comments how you're getting on. You can also put an image link in there to show us how you're getting on, or get across to the Discord server and post your images up there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.